Good morning, church family. It is always a joy to bring the word of the living God to you. And I just want to take a moment as your pastor, as your leader, uh, as your friend, and as a fellow believer and follower of Jesus Christ, uh, to encourage you and say, this may be the third wave, this may be the fourth wave, but here's what, one thing I know about you, you are unstoppable. And the reason why you're unstoppable is because Jesus Christ is alive and he lives in you and he lives in me. But we want to take this time to say to you that we are praying for you. We're thinking of you. We miss you. We were looking forward to coming together as a church family. It was going to be our first physical service for the year, but we will be back together very soon in Jesus name. But in the meanwhile, I just want you to know do not give yourself to fear. Do not allow fear to paralyze you. And that's what the enemy does. He, try, he tries to paralyze us by trying to take us down, but he really cannot. But if you are feeling discouraged, uh, I want you to know that we are here for you. Uh, email us. In fact, there's an email that's going to come up on your screen. Hello at mydownpour.com. Email us. We want to be specifically praying for you and we want to be there for you we're standing with you and we believe that god has great things for us and here's the thing 2021 has just begun and there's a lot of people already sort of feeling the fear of maybe the backlash of 2020 sort of breathing over 2021 but i do believe as a church as a community we're going to keep believing we're going to keep hoping we're going to keep imagining in jesus name we am, we may be in a lockdown but we're not gonna back down we're gonna keep hoping and imagining and based on that whole thought that i had for the start of this year the word that we spoke was hope and imagination i want to build on that that was a message that i, I was planning to bring and i want to expound on that thought and what i want to do this morning is i want to talk, take a simple story in the bible simple story from the scriptures from the life of a guy called paul paul the apostle the great apostle that wrote a lot of the epistles that we love and we read and that speaks encouragement to all of us but in the book of acts it's a story where uh, apostle paul is preaching the gospel and he's sharing the good news he's speaking the word of hope and all of a sudden he begins to experience a lot of backlash people seem to sort of say you shouldn't be doing that a few things happen and literally people start complaining and literally gets him taken to court and gets him put in jail in fact this is what it reads and before i actually get into what i'm about to read from acts chapter 16 i want to share with you the title of my message the title of my message is hope has a song hope has a song based on the word that we have for this year i want to speak that over us hope has a song and my prayer is that by the end of this message that you will be able that a song would literally creep into the crevices of your heart that you will sing out which will be a song of hope check out what it says Acts 16 22 it says the crowd joined in the attack against paul and silas the reason they were attacking them was because, obviously, as I just shared, was because Paul was speaking the message of hope. And, it, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they'd been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. So many of you feel this way, not in the sense of, you're in prison but i guess in a sense and it's not even about the lockdown that we're facing i feel so many of us have been paralyzed by you cannot do this you cannot be here uh, plans and purposes in fact uh, i know there's some of us that are having lots of family stuff happening weddings happening in fact even uh, our friend here connor who's actually videoing this message to, with me this this morning is is it was supposed to be the best man uh, this weekend at a wedding and he cannot even be a part of it i mean think about that so many of us feel that limitation and i want you to sort of recognize that we've got legends we've got leaders in the bible that have walked through the through the through the same emotions that some of us are feeling i want you to recognize it says that they took paul they did not just beat the guy they stripped him i mean talk about embarrassment i mean it was one of the most embarrassing things to be naked to be naked publicly and then to be beaten but it does not just stop there they say it says that they took him they got him jailed i mean i want you to take take a moment to think about 
what Paul was feeling. Yes, Paul is legendary. Yes, Paul was anointed. Yes, Paul planted all these churches. But at the end of the day, he's also a human. And I want you to think about the pain, the fear, the embarrassment. You know, the, the guy that was on the platform now being stripped and beaten and wounded and thrown in prison. And, and some of us can relate with that as, as, to, as to the setbacks that we seem to sort of experience. Every time we get excited, it seems to be another setback. It seems to be another setback. It needs to be another thing that happens. But I want you to notice what Paul does when he is in prison, when he's in lockup. Check out what it says in verse 25. It says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors fell, rather flew open, and everyone's chain came loose. I mean, there's so many things we can expound on this thought. I want you to notice, if there was any time that Paul could allow fear to creep in, this was the time. But my Bible tells me that Paul began to sing a song. There was a song that began to rise up in him. There was a song of hope that began to come forth. And I want each of us to know that hope has a song. No matter what season that you are going through, no matter what season we are going through as a church, as a body, as a community, as a nation, as a region, uh, whatever it is, there's a song that within us and there was something in, 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 in Paul that said, I refuse to give passage to fear. I want you to know that our refusal to fear reminds the devil that he is finished. Our refusal to fear reminds the devil that he is finished, that there is no backup plan, that there is nothing that he can do. There is nothing new that he can unleash. And I want to encourage you this morning to allow that song to rise up within you. You know, the Bible says Paul chooses to sing in the middle of his lockup. Paul chooses to sing in the middle of his setback. Hope has a song. There's a song that was rising. There was a song that was coming forth. There was a song that was pushing through. As I was reading the story the other day from the Bible, I was reminded of an article that I read a few years ago from the New Yorker. And in the New Yorker, there's a story of a man called Demetrius Cunningham. Demetrius Cunningham is this incredible individual who actually was in this correctional facility. He was in jail. But the story is about how he learned to play the piano while he was in his prison cell. Uh, the story goes on to say that he was part of this jail system. He was part of this. Uh, he was actually in prison in this, in this prison cell in Chicago. And, and he was part of the prison choir. And, and he was part of this choir. He was singing. And all of a sudden, he had this idea. There was this piano that was sitting there, but no one could play it. And he had this revelation that if, if, if someone could play it, the whole choir could go to the next level. But the problem was there was no one to teach him. And it was not like he could constantly have access to the piano. He could only access the piano every couple of months or so. And so he was sort of just having that thought. And a couple of weeks later, in the prison cell on the, tel on the television, this gospel singer called Andre Couch comes up. Andre Crouch, rather. And, 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 and as he was speaking, he shares about how he learned piano. And all of a sudden, Demetrius had this thought. For whatever reason, he said, I need to make myself a keyboard. I need to make myself a piano out of cardboard. Now, when you're in a prison cell, it's hard to access anything. But he remembered that Tuesdays was the day when they would hand out tissue boxes. And so each cell would get a tissue box. And so Demetrius started collecting tissue boxes. He just wanted to get something that he could use, cardboard boxes. So he starts picking them, picking them, picking them, until, until he was able to gather 76 keys, the whole keys on a keyboard. And what he began to do is he began to cut up these little cardboard boxes and begin to color them. One of the articles said that he used construction paper, black paper to use to get the black keys, white papers to use the white keys. And he made 76 keys and sort of got it together, stuck together and had this little piano. Now, the only problem was it looks sort of like a piano, 
but it didn't sound like one. There was no sound. So the next, next thing he had to sort of work up was, uh, just to give you context to, he had never had any history. He had never sort of been able to play an instrument. The only contact he'd had with the piano was when he was a young boy, when he was running around in his grandmother's house. His grandmother had a grand old piano. And when he'd run, he'd just sort of run his, rub his fring, fingers through it, and that was it. But he had no training in playing keys or any of that, of any of that background. And so the story goes on to say that he's got this made-up piano, and then he begins to think to himself, I need to start imagining what it sounds like. I need to start imagining what it sounds like. And so what he would do is every couple of months, every two months, he would have access to the piano that was in the prison chapel. And so he would press one key, the key of D, for example, and he would, he would just remember what it sounds like. He'd walk all the way back to his prison cell, and he'd, he'd remember what position and he would speak that key out, key of D, key of C, whatever the tone was. And over the months, over the period of time, literally started memorizing what the keys sounded like. To the point of he would play the key, piano, but the way he would play it is when he would press the different chords or the buttons or the different keys, the music would be coming out of his mouth. I mean, think about that. Think about the power of imagination. Think about how somebody had this, had this dream, this hope, this understanding that, you know, if, if, if I could learn this instrument, that the choir would go to the next level. Well, a year later, the next time the choir performed, Demetrius was on the piano and he could literally play any song. See, Demetrius had a hope and it was not just a hope that he had. He also had an imagination. He had to utilize his imagination to find the cardboard, to get the keys together, to remember the keys, to go back to his prison cell and somehow learn how to play. He had this imagination. He had this, he had this thing going where he was just sort of like, I need, I need to somehow make this work. And here's what I'm trying to say. The word for our year is hope and imagination. And maybe you have a hope, and I've sort of spoken this a few times, but maybe you need to exercise your imagination. And that's why I believe Paul was able to sing. See, the reason why he was able to sing was because he had a hope. And that hope grew legs, and that legs are called imagination, a positive imagination. And I can imagine Paul telling himself that my hope is in Christ and because my hope is in Christ, I have a word from God that I will preach before kings and I will speak before queens and I will speak the gospel to different parts of the earth. And he allowed that imagination to grow within him. And he knew that maybe I might die here. Maybe this is the end of me. But there was something in him that said, but it does not matter. I'm about to sing a song. Every moment I will worship my God. And I want you to notice what is amazing about the story. What is amazing about the story is the Bible goes on to say, if you actually read that passage of scripture, actually just the bit I read, where it says that they were singing and the whole prison listened. See, I want you to notice that it does not say that they were singing and everybody else sang with them. See, a lot of times it's easy for me, it's easy for you, it's easy for us to sing when we have a choir. But sometimes we need to be the first ones that will be the pioneer. We will be the first ones that need to stand up and say, I've got a song within me. See, he was singing and the whole prison cell was listening. All the people, regardless of their background, regardless of how they ended up in jail, regardless of how they were in prison, they were listening. That song of worship, those hymns were penetrating the walls of that prison cell. See, I want you to know that you may be in lockdown. You may be in a place where you feel surrounded by things. But when you begin to sing that song of hope, what begins to happen is your atmosphere changes. It listens to what you're singing. In fact, it says, it goes on to say, as you heard this, as you read, as we read the story, that the chains fell off. The chains fell off. The chains fell off. See, when you start having hope, when you carry a song of hope, it's not just your chains the things that have been holding you back that falls off, but it's also the people around you that have been held captive. They begin to dream for a greater tomorrow. They begin to have a sense for something new is around the corner. And I believe so many times, it's not just us that are discouraged, but the people around us that are discouraged, which is why, friend, it is important for you and I, for us to rise up 
and to be carriers of the song of hope. See, when you carry a song of hope, it changes not just the atmosphere within, but it also changes the out atmosphere outside of us. It changes everywhere we go. In fact, I find this all the time that when I'm in that space with God, there's a song that's buzzing inside of me. It does not even have to be necessarily a worship song, but there's just a song that's in my soul. I'm singing it while I'm driving. I'm singing it while I enter the office. I'm singing it while I enter the room. But here's what I'm trying to say. There's a joy that comes in. See, hope is so powerful because when you have hope, you begin to imagine. When you have hope, you begin to see. But when you have hope, you also begin to sing. And maybe I think there is a clue in that because you're listening to these messages and perhaps you're saying, but I don't have hope. I don't have imagination. I, I cannot seem to imagine anything. Maybe that's what Paul felt like. Maybe he was losing hope. Maybe he was losing imagination. That's why worship is so powerful. See, worship is nothing but our hope assistant. See, when you begin to worship, you begin to gain assistance in the area of hope. When you begin to worship, because worship does not, is not based on how I feel. Worship is not based on what I'm thinking. Worship is not even based on what I'm imagining. Worship is declaring the goodness of God. And when we worship, when you worship, what begins to happen is you're declaring the goodness of God over your situation. And all of a sudden, it's happened to me so many times when I worship, things that I wasn't imagining, all of a sudden I begin to imagine. When I worship a downpour, a lot of times this happens to me, regardless of the auditoriums that we are in, I begin to see a bigger space. I begin to see more people. I begin to see more miracles just in that very act of worship. You know, when we worship as a family in our home, I begin to see my family blessed. I begin to see my kids worshiping God. Worship produces a fresh imagination. I wonder if that's what happened in that prison cell that night. I wonder when Paul began to sing, he was just doing as a place of encouraging himself. But as he encouraged himself, I wonder if he encouraged the room. And as he encouraged the room, I wonder if his imagination was triggered one, one more time. And I believe that began to be the fuel to the hope that was required in that moment. Which is why I think Paul says he writes a lot about hope. But check out what it says in 1 Timothy. Paul is writing to his son, his spiritual son. He says, we have fixed our hope on the living God. See, the thing about hope is not just something that happens in fleeting moments. Hope is a fixed status. Hope is a place of being anchored. He says, I, we have fixed our hope on the living God. I want us to fix our hope. Come on down, Paul. In 2021, let's not just have fleeting hope. Let's have fixed hope. Let's not just have sort of shaky hope. Let's have focused hope in Jesus' name. Let's be people that say, I'm fixing my eyes. Because here's the thing. Hope is not a status. Hope is not materials. Hope is not a feeling. Hope is not an emotion, but hope is person. And his name is Jesus. And, and maybe you're part of this service and I do not know how you're watching this video or how you're checking us on, on YouTube, or on Facebook, whichever platform you're using, but maybe you do not know this person. And I want to take a moment to introduce you to this hope that we call upon, this person that we call upon, his name is Jesus. He's the best thing that happened to me. I remember when I was 14 and when I was hopeless, I thought my life was going in a certain direction, but really I had no hope. But the moment I said, Jesus, make yourself real to me, friend, hope entered my heart. And here's what you can do this morning. You can say yes to hope. And the greatest way you can say yes to hope is by saying yes to Jesus. It's as simple as saying, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. I receive you. Give me new hope. Take away my shame. Take away my guilt. Take away my pain. I put my trust in you. And friend, I want you to know the moment you say that prayer, Jesus comes right into that atmosphere and hope is born within you. If you've said that prayer, I want you to type a message. I want you to send us an email. We want to be there for you. But for the rest of us, Downpour family, let's be people that are not just speakers of hope, 
but let's become singers of hope because hope has a song. And one of the greatest ways we can change an atmosphere and bring hope is through the act of worship because worship is our hope assistant. Church, I want you to know we're praying for you. We're thinking of you. We love you. And I want to speak one more time that this is the year of hope and imagination in Jesus' name.